Do you sometimes wonder whether your signal's actually getting out? How well your antenna's working? Compare it with another antenna, but you want those results quickly and immediately. Well, I think I might have the answer for you. I'm operating up here in the Highlands of Scotland. Uh, in the heart of the winter, it's mid-February, and uh, we've got uh, a bit of snow around. We had a snowfall uh, during the night, so it, uh, some of it's uh, melted now, but uh, it's still pretty cold outside. Um, I came up here and I've been using my little KX2 transceiver, primarily CW because I like CW. And uh, across there is a hill or a mountain. It's about 1500 foot high. I'm not sure what qualifies a mountain. I'm sure somebody will tell me. <laughs> but that, uh, that mountain over there is about 1500 foot high, maybe a bit more. And that is in an easterly direction. Now something that I have noticed is that I tend to have quite a few contacts with stateside, even with the 5 or 10 watts on the KX2, I have quite a few contacts with stateside and Canada. And I began to think that maybe that hill over there is acting as a, a, as a reflector because I don't have too many contacts into Europe. And as I say, east is over there and that hill is in the way. So maybe it's in the way for Europe and it's aiding me for stateside. I do remember that uh, Les Moxon, G6XN, published a very interesting article in Radcom many years ago now, explaining how uh, you do benefit from reflections from hills. He was operating at the bottom of a hill. Now I'm, I'm some way away from the bottom of that hill. I guess it's probably about a mile away or maybe half a mile. But anyway, um, it's an interesting um, fact that I've noticed. Now, what I want to talk about very briefly is reverse beacon. Now, reverse beacon is a very valuable tool to check out whether your signal is uh, getting enough or not and how well it's getting out. Go into, uh, go into your computer, type in reverse beacon and then select spot search. Now spot search enables you to check on propagation. What you need to do is you need to be able to send CW, but it doesn't really matter if you're not a CW operator. A lot of transceivers now will enable you to put a, a message into the, uh, into the uh, recording um, system on the transceiver. Um, it can store sort of CW messages and you can send it quite slowly anyway. Uh, maybe you might even be able to type that message in, I don't know. The uh, reverse beacon network comprises a number of skimmer receivers located all over the world. And they're looking for somebody sending CQ followed by the call sign. So what you need to do is to send CQ three times or something like that, followed by your call sign, repeat that several times, and the skimmer will then pick it up. I'll show you how I pre-programmed it into my KX2 here. Store that into your transceiver if you want to store it as a message and then press send and send it a couple of times. And then go into reverse beacon, select spot search and then type in your call sign. So if I type in GM3OJV and up on the screen comes this as you can see. Now you can see that there's quite a few uh, stateside beacons that have spotted me, not too much uh, in the, the European direction, which really supports the fact that um, that uh, uh, mountain over there is acting as a reflector. The other thing I've noticed um, is that the bands in the winter up here tend to open fairly late, though so anything before about half past 10, 11 o'clock in the morning um, it, it seems to be a bit dicey and the, the, the bands really aren't open. It tends to peak around about two or three in the afternoon and it dies again um, as uh, we get towards five o'clock. Now, this is partly due to the fact that we're at the bottom of the sunspot cycle, 
partly due to the fact that it's winter and probably partly due to the fact that I'm only running uh, 5 or 10 watts from my little KX2 to uh, quite a short antenna. Anyway, it's an interesting fact and I've learnt now that uh, not to bother too much about getting up early in the morning because you're probably not going to work much anyway. So there we are. So that's my experience of operating in Scotland in the winter and uh, as I say, it's pretty cold out there. But I hope that uh, you've learned a little bit from this video and I, uh, the main point really is to try reverse beacon. If you haven't used it, please try it because it's a great way of checking out your antenna and also checking out propagation. So don't forget to press the subscribe button uh, if you've enjoyed this video and enjoy your ham radio. And I think next time I speak to you, I shall probably be down south again in slightly, slightly warmer weather. I hope so anyway. Until then, take care. Bye.